Welcome to this session on Achieving Engaging and Intuitive User Experiences. My name is Dan Mitchell. In this session, we're going to focus on the design and tools that will help you to evolve your application to satisfy future requirements and technology innovation. This diagram represents what we at Progress see as the architecture that you should build towards in order to be successful when evolving your application. It consists of a well-designed, reliable, and scalable backend using OpenEdge and Progress App Server. It also needs a secure middle tier that controls the interaction between the clients and the backend services. This session will focus on the most visible part of the architecture, the user interface and user experience. We'll refer to this as UI UX. Remember though, while UI and UX are the most visible aspect to end users of your application, the other parts of the architecture are also key to delivering a compelling user experience. The best UX design in the world will not work for the user if the response of the back-end system is too slow or it isn't sufficiently secure. Of course, the reverse is also true. The most scalable, robust, and secure back-end isn't going to provide users with a compelling experience unless the application offers intuitive and engaging user interfaces. It's important to note that even if your existing users aren't asking for this level of UI adaptability, your future users might be, particularly as a partner. Providing a modern and flexible UI can give you a competitive edge and elevate your image as an innovative company. Bottom line, compelling UI is a prerequisite to great user experience and something that's worth making the effort to do correctly. Choosing the right tools and technologies is important. We'll get to that later. But it's also critical to fully understand the processes and personas involved, particularly the importance of the user experience designer. It's very easy to oversimplify UI considerations to front-end versus back-end. For your application evolution, we think that you should recognize three distinct roles and four distinct tasks needed to create compelling UIs. You already have a back-end, but it may include some embedded user interface and may not yet expose a RESTful API. The evolution of this layer will primarily be the domain of your ABL developers. On the UI side of things, you may already have some UI developers. You may have back-end ABL developers designing your UI layouts. This would commonly be the case if you haven't clearly separated your UI and business logic. As you evolve to depend more on web and mobile UI, the difference between back-end and front-end development will become more apparent, and it will be essential to separate these roles. The UI developer will also be tasked with the actual implementation of the application design. They'll take wireframe previews and pictures and create real usable interfaces. UI developers today need to know web technologies like HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript for creating responsive page layouts. They may use frameworks like Angular, React, or Vue for productive component-based development and may have skill with mobile technologies like NativeScript, Cordova, or React Native. These are very different skills from our conventional application developer or the UI experience designer that I'll talk about next. In most of the successful UI modernizations we've seen, our customers and partners have taken a user experience first approach. That reflects the separation of roles and tasks shown on this slide. At the very least, you need to think about UX design and UI development as two different things. These should really be performed by different people with appropriate skill sets. It can be tempting to cut corners and just recreate your current UI in a browser interface instead of considering user experience. That might give you some immediate benefits in terms of implementation and speed to release, but it's not going to move the needle in terms of user experience. We recommend that you take a step back and consider an optimal user experience from the ground up. This usually means hiring or contracting a UX specialist. These folks aren't developers at all. They're typically 50% psychologist and 50% graphic designer. They won't just look at the current UI. They will interview your users and watch how they interact with the system, sometimes even how they move the mouse, where they click, or what keyboard shortcuts they use. 
These specialists spend a lot of time thinking about workflow and efficiency, as well as visual simplicity and elegance. It's a unique skill set that you may not have in-house. Many partners and customers will hire a UX expert, but you can also contract these types of services. Indeed, Progress Professional Services has a UX team that has done exactly this type of engagement many times. The key point is that to do user interface correctly, you should consider user experience first. The key to designer and developer productivity is choosing the right front-end, back-end, and middle-tier tools and technologies. Progress has best-of-breed offerings for all of these components. The best way to highlight these pieces is with a demonstration. This is the business case that I'll use. It's a fictitious company that sells electronic parts and repair services. They need to modernize how they engage with their customers and how they enable their field service and back office teams to do their jobs. This is a great example of what we mean by adaptive UI because the variety of UI innovations in this demo show how a business application can adapt based on the preferences and requirements of both internal and external users. For customers, a conversational chatbot will help in the self-scheduling of service appointments. This will reduce the amount of time a customer needs to spend on the phone with a customer service representative. A truly native mobile application integrated to back-end systems will offer a complete solution for the field service technician. And for back office users, an adaptive web application will provide access to business functions from a web browser. Progress provides great tools and technologies like NativeScript, Kendo UI, and NativeChat for creating these types of modern UIs. We have several back-end systems that need to be accessed and updated. You can see that we're using data from both OpenEdge and Microsoft SQL, and we will also have a Progress rules engine called Corticon that's helping us to make decisions. We'll access OpenEdge business logic through a REST API, SQL data using ODBC, and the Corticon rules engine using its REST interface. To easily integrate and coordinate information from all sources, we add a mediation tier called Progress Convey. This will be the API service platform. We'll talk about it in more detail later. We've built a demo to show how these different pieces interact. The scenario that we'll step through in a moment starts when a customer realizes that their system is down and they need to schedule a repair. They use a conversational chatbot to self-schedule a field technician to perform the appropriate service. Using a rules engine, the system will select the appropriate technician based upon skill, availability, and location. That field technician receives a notification on their mobile device that tells them that they have a field service task to perform. The technician reviews and acknowledges the task, contacts the customer, and orders needed parts all from within a native mobile application. When they request the part that is needed, they will receive a message that it is out of stock. An inventory clerk will process receive stock and update the inventory levels in a web UI to the back-end ERP system. The field service technician receives a notification that the part they need is shipped. The field service technician then performs the service using the geolocation features of their device to find the customer. After the service is performed, the customer acknowledges the service is completed. Let's take a look at this in action. For our demo, we're going to be acting as each of the three participants that would be involved in this process. We'll switch between the three personas and show how each has a different user experience. We'll start by acting as a customer who has a down system. They'll navigate to the DigiServe website from another system or their mobile device. They see a button that says, click here if you need some help. When they click this, it launches a chatbot conversation so that they can describe their problem and schedule a repair technician. You can see that the chatbot introduces itself and shows some of the tasks that it can help with. In this case, the customer needs to request service. They can click or touch the button in the chat, or they can type a variety of phrases to tell the chatbot that they need to request service. I'll just press the button. 
Now the chatbot will ask a series of questions to determine what type of service I need. First, I will say that the problem is with my MacBook. Native Chat recognizes that this is a type of laptop, so it asks what the problem is. I will tell it I think it's my motherboard. The chat now has enough information about the type of problem, so it will ask when the service will be performed. I'll say tomorrow. Now we need to find out where the customer is, so it asks for a zip code. It asks for a contact name, and I'll enter that. Now it shows all the information that it's collected and asks me to confirm. At this point, I change my mind about the type of hardware that's broken and I tell the chat that it's really my server. This doesn't disrupt the session and require the user to start over. It already remembers the other answers I provided and updates the summary and asks for confirmation. I will confirm. The session ends with the customer being told that they will be contacted by Mike Williams. At this point, we will switch personas to our technician, Mike Williams. If he looks at his Android phone, he has received a text message. Let's look at it. It doesn't give Mike a lot of information, but it does tell him that he needs to find out more. So Mike opens his DigiServe app that's installed on his phone. The app allows him to log in, which he's already done. If he looks at the second tab of the app, he sees that he has a new task to perform. He touches on the item and he gets more details. From here, he can call or email the customer by touching the phone number or the email address. Note that when he does this, he sees the dialer and email client that he's accustomed to for his Android phone. After he interacts with the customer, he can press Acknowledge to indicate that he is working the issue. Now he gets a message to request parts for the repair. This is done on the third tab, which presents a list of parts from our ERP inventory system. He needs a motherboard, so he chooses the first one on the list. He can see that there are no motherboards in stock, so he needs to request one by pressing Request Part. When he does this, he's told that he will be notified when the part is available and shipped. Now we switch personas again to the back office inventory clerk. They'll use a web-based app to show that inventory has been received. They change the quantity from 0 to 5 and click Save. Once the quantity is updated, we switch back to the technician. He sees on his app that he's received a push notification that the item has been shipped. The last step is for the tech to actually perform the repair. When he does that, he can click the Service button and the customer signs the acknowledgement. Once that's done, the task list shows that this task has been completed. We showed you seven progress technologies during this demonstration, including OpenEdge, but we're going to focus on four of them that are really designed to make it simple for you to build and deploy applications with great user interface and user experience. These technologies include Kenvey Chat for our chatbot integration, Native Script for our mobile app development, Kendo UI for web page development, and the Progress Kenvey platform that was used to connect everything. Let's start with the Kenvey API service platform. When you're developing a web or mobile application, you may think that the hardest part is designing and coding the app. The reality is that the actual app is just the tip of the iceberg. In this picture, you can think of the app as the part you see above the waterline. There are a multitude of technologies that you can use to develop your app and your web pages. Some of these may be provided by or may interact with progress tools. When you look below the water, there are a bunch of difficult tasks that must be considered when you're building and deploying an app. Integration with back-end systems, orchestration of events, security, compliance, the items you see here are all key components of a well-built business app. 
To address these important factors, we recommend Progress Convey. Progress Convey provides a platform as a service that manages all the essential middleware tasks required for your development projects to be successful. Convey comes with many cloud-based services and accelerators that are easy for you to use in building and deploying your app. Everything from data connectivity and caching to security and compliance are available for your use. I will show you some examples of how we use these services. Here's the back-end OpenEdge data store that we used in our app, shown in the DB Navigator in Progress Developer Studio. Using the Convey Rapid OpenEdge adapter, we quickly connected this OpenEdge data to make it available to our services and applications. Once connected, Convey maintains a local data store with the data from the OpenEdge database. This allows for cloud caching and disconnected access to data when needed. The second thing Convey provided for the demo was the ability to create a service appointment record in the MS SQL based field service management system. Using Convey provided us with the ability to develop the application against a cloud data store before the back end database was finished. This is called two speed IT. The developer of the application could build their app without any knowledge of where their data was coming from. By the way, the same holds true for the back end developer. They can build their services and databases to specification. Once they're finished, the app can access them through Convey. Here's the data set we provided to the developer for testing. It has a couple of records. Once the SQL Server tables were created, we switched to accessing the SQL backend using the rapid no-code adapter to SQL. The developer never saw a difference except in the data that their app was given. Here's the actual data from SQL. And we can see in the Convey web console a local cache of the very same data kept synchronized by Convey. The third task that we used Convey for was for our native chat chatbot. We used a pre-built Convey module to send SMS messages to a device via a simple piece of Node.js code made available as a service. This service hides the complexity of direct interaction with third-party Twilio SMS server provider APIs. By the way, another pre-built Convey module was used to send push notifications to the DigiServe application when the inventory was replenished. Everything that Convey does can be monitored through its operational analytics dashboards. These not only provide valuable insight into how the applications are being used, which data is being accessed and which APIs are being called, but also captures any errors and allows you to drill into these errors to get detailed information to troubleshoot and remedy them. Next is Convey Chat. What's unique about Convey Chat is that it is based on declarative programming and can be trained like a person to have a natural conversation. This is different than other chatbot solutions that are built using manual and rigid decision tree architectures, which make them sound like answering machines. To build a chat, we must teach Convey Chat to understand the input. Convey Chat Natural Language Engine supports dynamic training on top of existing enterprise data like product info, company, or contact names, then it can detect these entities, extract the user intent, and pass them to a cognitive flow. In that process, Convey Chat analyzes the current conversation, long-term bot memory, and the goals defined by you. Then it dynamically generates the conversation flow on each user input. To deliver a response, Convey Chat requests the needed data from internal systems like Salesforce, SharePoint, or any API. Then it displays the response in the user's channel of choice, such as web, mobile, or social media. Sessions in Convey Chat are declarative and are managed through the creation of a cognitive flow. This is a JSON document that describes all the questions and potential actions that may occur during a chat session. You can also train the chatbot to understand synonyms. In our demonstration, I entered MacBook, and Convey Chat translated that to laptop. You can create lists of synonyms that you know, and as you observe the operation of the chatbot, you can add other synonyms and misspellings that you collect from the user experience data. The analytics part of Convey Chat keeps track of the journey that users take through a chat session. It highlights completions, failures, and flows based on different keywords that are used. This allows you to better tune the session to improve the user experience. Next is the mobile app. 
The industry today has standardized on two mobile platforms, iOS and Android. The challenge you face when building a mobile app is that you must make it available for both platforms. Developing for iOS requires your developers to know the Swift language, but when you develop for Android, you must use Java. This means that you have to develop the same app twice with two sets of skills. Once you have two code bases for the same app, it may be difficult to keep them in sync and manage changes in both platforms. Progress has introduced an open source product called NativeScript that helps to solve the challenges of multi-platform mobile app development with non-standard development languages. NativeScript allows you to create native, not hybrid, apps for iOS and Android using a single code base developed in JavaScript and HTML5. It supports frameworks like Angular and Vue. This allows you to leverage existing web developers to build mobile apps. Using NativeScript allows you to access native functionality of the device with native performance and user experience. Here are some examples of the JavaScript and HTML code that's used to create a NativeScript application. You may even be able to reuse the code that you used to develop your web-based applications. As you can see here, NativeScript provides native functionality depending on the platform. Here, a single call to the dialer will look different on Android and iOS. The same holds true for the email functionality. When you run the app from your device, it looks exactly as it should without any effort from the developer. Even things like geolocation are available as plugins in NativeScript. Your developer doesn't have to worry about anything except making a single call. NativeScript does the rest. The final piece of our demonstration was the web interface used by the back office worker. This was built using a tool set called Kendo UI. Kendo UI is a unified and tested set of controls that are built for web applications using HTML5 and JavaScript. This library will give you the power to develop intuitive, responsive web applications in a single supported group of controls. It allows you to create web apps that are responsive so that they'll react to the size and layout of the device they're being viewed on. They're very performant with minimum resources required. You can also create custom styles using the SAS-based theme builder that's included. It also works with most popular JavaScript frameworks including Angular, Vue, and React. So to recap, Progress recommends taking a UX-first approach to designing your optimal next-generation user interfaces. We offer best-of-breed UI development solutions to implement the UX design, including NativeScript, NativeChat, and Kendo UI. UI development can be further simplified and accelerated using Progress Convey as a back-end-as-a-service mediation tier, decoupling UI developers from back-end systems and abstracting many middleware concerns. If you are interested in any of these technologies, I would encourage you to check out the websites that are shown here. You can download trials, ask questions, and get help as you work through your development projects. Thank you for taking the time to view this session.